Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Till now, uh, we are plotting data using push buttons and customizing the style from a drop down list. I've added the links in the description. In this video, I will show you how to create server in Qt for your application and then use this server to receive our data from our client in order to plot it. So now let's understand like the basic architecture that we are going to follow. So here you have your main window, right? The network plot class that we just created. Okay, so its main function is to actually plotting all the data uh, that we have using all the different push buttons. And now when we'll add server, then the data coming in from the server part, right? So we cannot actually create the server on the same thread. So if we do that, then uh, since the server will have to wait for all the new connections and all the, the data and also all the data that will be coming in you know uh, can freeze the ui itself so what we'll do is first create a server thread right on which our server will be running on that particular thread it will wait for new connections right and whenever we uh, find a new connection then it will create a data thread right on which all the data collection part is uh, basically happening and a particular client will be connected over that thread itself and from that thread we'll be collecting all the data okay now how we'll actually send the data to the main window we'll understand later but this is the basic structure that we'll be creating so for that first we'll have to create this data collection part then its thread and then the server part and then finally the server thread so let's see uh, how should we actually do it so over here what we'll do is uh, add new okay in this case we need to actually add a c++ class right so our class name uh, will be my thread right we'll add our uh, base class that is qthread okay so we actually need to add uh, q object else our signal and slot function will not work which we'll be using later on okay now remember uh, the header and source file also you need to change the path right so for the header you need to add include and for the source file you need to add the src okay great next and just finish it so since uh, we'll be dealing with network we need to first go to the project folder and add network right once you have added that go my go to mythread.h and add all the different uh, libraries that we'll be using so first will be include with network then uh, tcp socket and we also need qdebug now for the init function uh, we actually also require the id and parent since we'll be calling this from a server thread right so what we'll do is we'll add q into ptr first we'll give the id and then q object stop parent for now uh, by default we'll give it zero okay now in the uh, public only we'll create a run function which will actually start running our thread right now what all will be required is our socket and a socket description so that will save in the header file itself and that will be private okay. so we'll first create a socket that is qtcp socket and along with it uh, that 
a socket descriptor. Uh, so in the uh, init function of my thread, we'll actually store this ID in the socket descriptor. Right. And create our run function. So uh, the purpose of run function is that it will run indefinitely unless and until specified to actually stop it, right? So just for debugging purposes, uh, we'll add a queue debug that is our thread is started, right? Now we need to create a, a new socket. Now we need to we need to actually set our ID that we got from our server into our socket. So what we'll do is we'll add a set socket descriptor. Oh yeah. Okay. Now if in case it fails, right, we need to emit an error. So what we'll do is emit error okay and simply return it okay now there are two uh, other signals one will be ready uh, i mean read ready and other one will be disconnected so you can uh, directly connect it. I'll just paste the code over here. These signals are actually part of QTCP socket over here. And whenever these uh, signals are emitted, we'll actually run these functions. Okay, so these slots uh, will actually be created in our my thread uh, class itself so for now we'll also add a queue debug to uh, let the user know you know uh, that a client is connected okay great now in order to run this indefinitely right we do not want to actually close this thread so if we uh, add no command after this then it will simply just connect to it and the connection will be closed since uh, this thread also stops working right so what we'll do is we'll add an exit and this will force uh, to run the loop okay indefinitely now next we need to actually add slot the one is read ready and the another one is disconnected so you head back to mythread.h right and uh, over here now we are going to add some public slots okay public slots great so the first one was uh, read ready and the another one was uh, disconnected in order to go to this uh, function what we do is we go to refactor and add definition okay you can manually also type it but this is a faster way of doing it okay so uh, what we need to actually do in read ready is uh, we know now that the data has arrived uh, we can actually print that particular data. So we'll be storing uh, this data in a queue uh, byte array. So 
let's create a qubyte array call data and uh, read all the data that is there in the buffer right now okay oh yeah i forgot to add void over here okay uh yeah now the read ready data is here and for now we can simply just uh, display all the data in QDebug. Make sure you add the socket descriptor so that you know if you have multiple uh, data coming in from multiple clients, then this way you can actually distinguish like from where the data is actually coming in. Okay, and then simply print the data. Now we can simply add a disconnected. Right? So again, you just refactor it. Okay. First of all, Q debug message. Okay, now once we are disconnected, uh, we can actually delete our socket so that, you know, we can free up the space and whenever a new uh, connection comes in, we'll then create a new socket for that. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll add socket, then delete later. And now since our thread is running continuously because of this exit command, right? So we need to actually exit from this particular thread so for that we'll add an exit command let's see if we have any other errors oh yeah so we have one more uh, error over here so we are emitting a signal but we have actually not yet defined this signal in our header file right so we'll head back here and uh, create signals okay so this was an error signal uh, and the input should be uh, you know the QTCP socket error so what we'll do is QTCP socket okay this is a socket error okay so now you can see uh, we have added this now as you can see after building it the error has gone sometimes takes just a little bit of time to actually remove those zero okay now this uh, my thread seems to be fine now what i need to do is actually create a class uh, for server so what that class will do uh, as i have shown here right so now we'll be creating this server class which will actually wait for new connection and create new data thread so the my thread function that we have written right now it will actually create this now we go here and again we add a new c++ class right right now again in the base class you won't find it so we actually required this qtcp server class so q TCP there server class right and we'll again add a queue object because we need it for interacting with different uh, signal and slot functions that we'll be creating later okay now again the header file should be saved in include folder 
same with the source file in src folder okay okay so first of all in the header file what we'll actually do is uh, we'll include our my thread file so we'll add our my thread class over here and now uh, for the init function we'll add explicit right uh, so we have a my server and we have we'll just add a parent so key object start parent again by default we'll keep it zero uh, same we need to do over here as well q object star parent Now, uh, the main public function that we'll be writing over here is our start function. So, what we'll do is we'll add void start server. Okay. Now we go to refactor and add definition over here. So uh, first of all, port you can we need to mention at uh, which port actually you will be accepting all the connections. So for now, I'm setting the port as one two three four. This is a random port that I've chosen. You can choose any other port that you think is fine for you. Now uh, we actually want to listen at this particular port, right? So. So uh, we can take any host address that we have and also we need to uh, mention the port that we'll be using. Okay, so that is done. If in case it's false, then we can just debug a message like could not start a server. Okay, great. And if the server has started, then we'll simply debug. Listening to port. Keep okay, wait. Once that is done, uh, what we actually need to do is now, you know, make a function for all the incoming connections uh, that will be coming in and then we need to actually create a thread. We again go to the server and create a function for that. So it will be a protected function called void. So whenever a new fun uh, new connection comes, right, it will automatically call this function. So again, we will give our socket descriptor. Okay, great. Now what we need to do is actually add its definition. In the definition, first we'll debug. You can add the descriptor, connecting message. Okay, now uh, once this function is called, we need to first actually cre uh, create a my thread. So what you'll do is use my thread our thread equals 
new my thread now you need to give in uh, two inputs remember first will be your socket descriptor that is your id and second one is your parent so we give a socket descriptor over here right and then uh, we give this as in this server class as parent okay so now what we'll add is signal and slot so uh, once this thread is not needed right it can be uh, deleted later so for that what we'll do is we'll use the command connect so connect actually connects two signals uh, or one signal to another slot right so first you need to given this class that is the new thread class that you have created and the signal in that particular class that you'll be uh, using so this will be finished right then you'll actually uh, connect it to delete later so thread collect slot delete later okay great now once that is done you need to actually start the thread itself so for that what you'll do is you say thread start so basically what will do is it it will simply call the run function you know that we had created a while back so with this, uh, okay, so one more thing that we can probably add is QTCP server and parent over here. Now we have created actually this data thread, right? The server, the server class. Now we actually need to create a server thread on which this server class will be called and will be running continuously uh, the reason why i'm doing this uh, i'll explain in signal and slot function okay we'll do is we'll again add new we need to add a class right so this time our class name will we can keep it as server thread right uh, again, this will be Q thread. In the header file, add it to include. So again, next finish. Okay, now you have your uh, server thread as well. Uh, first, we'll go to server thread dot h. Okay, over here we need to include our server class. So we'll add include okay. Now, again, in this thread. Uh, we can actually give parent so it will be q, q object star parent by default it will be null and again we need to mention void run can add the definition over here we'll create my server Okay, next we'll do server dot uh, start server and again enter the exit command so your loop will be running continuously okay great and over here also you need to enter q object
you can actually call this thread you know from your uh, main window that is our network plot dot cpp okay so where we are initializing the whole class over here itself you can actually create this thread before doing that you need to include this uh, server thread dot h in uh, network plot dot h okay now over here you can simply call so thread star thread create a new server thread and enter this in the network plot as parent for this particular thread and simply start the thread okay great now once you run it okay so now after running it you uh, you can simply give this access okay this shows that your server is running right so if i go right. so you can see like when i entered from my google chrome so it shows the client is connected Okay, so let's solve this issue of no slot uh, in my thread. Yeah, so this issue like uh, the slot is not available. This was simply because a mistake. I've missed a Y over here. Okay, so say we can go and change over here. It's... Now if we run it again. okay so now as you can see this time we are not getting any error so yeah so now you can see you are also getting data in that is get HTTP. now what we need to do is uh, actually get this data properly right in the next video we will create client script in python to send data to our server hey everyone thank you so much for watching the video hope you like it make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel also check out my other videos on the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other videos i should make